I first saw this painting when I was an undergraduate student at McMaster University. And my first impression of this painting was that this horse was facing an impending disaster, one that he could avert by simply changing direction. Now, as I've gotten older, as a scientist and a clinician, my perspective has changed. I now see this painting representing a coming of age for Western civilization. Consider that humans, for thousands of years, have relied on horses for transportation, agriculture, war, and then in the blink of an eye, the advent of the steam engine made the horse obsolete and ushered in the Industrial Revolution that led to a fundamental change in Western civilization. And it quietly resulted in a significant change in our health system during the 20th century. During the 20th century, we saw a dramatic decline in infectious diseases, such as tuberculosis, measles, and polio. And in the wake of those, that dramatic decline in infectious diseases, we saw the rise of chronic inflammatory diseases like asthma, multiple sclerosis, and Crohn's disease. These are diseases where our own body's immune system attack our organs. These are modern diseases of modern society that predominantly affect Western wealthy nations like Canada. Take Crohn's disease, for example. This is a disease I specialize in as a gastroenterologist. This is the picture of a bowel that's healthy. And this is the picture of a bowel of somebody who has active Crohn's disease. In Crohn's disease, your body's immune system attacks your bowel. It causes abdominal pain, diarrhea, and bleeding. Imagine for a moment what your quality of life would be like if this is what your bowel looked like. It's this picture that motivates physicians and scientists like myself to study the root cause of Crohn's disease. Today, 0.5% of Canadians have Crohn's disease or its cousin, ulcerative colitis. We spend roughly $1.2 billion every year on direct health care costs, and we lose roughly $1.6 billion every year in indirect costs, such as loss in work productivity. But that doesn't measure the true cost of this disease, the cost and quality of life for patients like Mark. Mark was an elite athlete who was training for speed skating in the Olympics. And just before he was going to try out for the Olympics, he was diagnosed with a mild form of Crohn's disease. But that bleeding was enough for him to lose his advantage. And instead of representing his country at the Olympics, he ended up watching it from home. His disease progressed. He needed medications that suppressed his immune system. And when these drugs didn't work, he needed to have part of his bowel removed. I've wondered, as I've taken care of patients like Mark, when did Crohn's disease originate? If you look at historical records, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis emerged at the turn of the 20th century. In fact, Burl Crohn's and colleagues only described the first 10 cases of Crohn's disease in 1932. Since 1932, Crohn's disease has exploded in epidemic proportions in the Western world in countries like Canada, the US, countries in Europe and Australia. But what's even more fascinating than what's happened in a country like Canada is what's happening in a country like China and India that is newly industrialized. As these countries have transitioned from developing to newly industrialized, their societies have become westernized. And we've seen the emergence of chronic inflammatory diseases. I was just in Beijing about a month ago, where I met with senior gastroenterologists who confirmed to me that a few decades ago, Crohn's disease was unheard of. But in the last 10 years, they've seen numerous cases. They shared with me a database of over 1,000 patients who've had Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis being taken care of in just one hospital in the past 10 years. Crohn's disease is no longer isolated to the Western world. It emerged in China in the 21st century in the same patterns that we saw it emerge in the 20th century as Canada. It is truly a global disease. And that begs the question, does it matter that Crohn's disease is a global disease? It does matter. This is how I sometimes feel when I think about the impact on our society that a disease like Crohn's disease will have in the next 10 years. If you don't understand the landscape that you're facing, you won't be able to avoid the wave when it comes crashing down. Let me explain why. I want to introduce you to a concept that I call compounding prevalence. Prevalence is the number of people with a disease who are diagnosed in a specific geographic area at a particular moment in time. Compounding prevalence is the exponential rise of that disease over time. Compounding prevalence is analogous to compounding interest. When you're in your 20s and you save money and you get an interest uh, return, over time, that 
money compounds or exponentially rise. When you're in your 60s, you'll be able to have a large sum of money and retire on that. Compounding interest is good news for the economy, but compounding prevalence is actually bad for the economy of Canada. Take, for example, Alberta. It's a province of roughly 4 million people. Just over half a percent of the population has Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, or roughly 25,000 Albertans. Every year, we make 800 new diagnoses. If we conservatively assume that the rate of new diagnoses remains stable, and the province grows by roughly 2% per year, by 2025, the number of people who have Crohn's disease in this province will double. This is a major uh, impact that we all have in Canada. And we'll ask, have to ask ourselves the question, is our healthcare system ready to handle this exponential rise in chronic inflammatory diseases? The truth is, we're barely able to handle natural population growth, let alone the exponential rise of chronic of compounding prevalence. Remember when I first showed you this horse, my first impression was that this horse could avert a disaster simply by changing course. Today, our healthcare system is this horse. It's facing a, a disaster, a disaster that we can avert if we have the foresight to change direction. Today, we predominantly practice what I call reactive medicine. A reactive response is one in which we, we um, treat a disease after it has developed. In Crohn's disease, we treat it with chronic drugs that suppress the immune system. And when these drugs don't work, the disease comes back. And then our patients need to go to surgery to remove parts of their bowel. And then the disease comes back, and we re-enter this vicious cycle. To change the future of healthcare, we need to practice proactive medicine. Proactive response means preventing the disease from occurring before it starts. How do we shift healthcare from reactive medicine to proactive medicine? Well, to do that, to prevent a disease, you have to know a disease. And in 2015, we know a tremendous amount about Crohn's disease. We've identified over 160 genes that make you susceptible to Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Mutations in these genes affect our ability of our immune system to interact with bugs in our gut. We've learned that inflammation in our bowel is predominantly driven by our microbiome. Our microbiome represents 100 trillion organisms, organisms that we have a symbiotic relationship with. They support life by helping us digest nutrients and by protecting us from invasion from disease-causing bacteria. A healthy microbiome is a diverse microbiome. And how does a diverse microbiome help to protect ourselves from an environmental insult? Well, you can see that this rainforest is more likely to be able to resist an environmental insult, like a forest fire or an infection, than this sparse forest. Similarly, microbiomes that lack diversity face annihilation if they face an external threat. And in this barren environment, a disease like Crohn's disease can emerge. And how do we actually prevent a barren environment like this from occurring? Well, to explain that, I want to take you through what happens to your microbiome as you age. As a baby passes through the birth canal, she is colonized with her mother's bacteria. By three months of age, she has the balance between good and bad bacteria coming together. And that balance is dramatically affected by exposures in our environment. For example, a baby that is breastfed has a reduced risk of developing Crohn's disease. And that's because they have a diverse and robust microbiome. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you need to breastfeed until they're four years old, but the first year of life is critical. In that first year, the microbiome is evolving, and if there is a disruption to it, such as receiving antibiotics for an infection, you can dramatically change your microbiome. By three years of life, the microbiome is set. And the diversity of that microbiome is dependent on exposures to microorganisms in your environment, which you'll get less exposure if you live in a sterile city as compared to if you live in a rural environment. Now, as adults, there's a number of things that we can do to improve the integrity of our microbiome and to affect our future health. In fact, there are things that we can do to prevent Crohn's disease. And I'll give you just two examples. So we've known for years that smoking increases your risk of developing Crohn's disease. And it likely does this by reducing the diversity of your microbiome 
and changing its composition. In contrast, studies have shown that women who consume the daily recommended dose of fiber, which is roughly 25 grams per day, have a 30% reduced risk of developing Crohn's disease as compared to women who consume a low-fiber diet. It's within our power to actually affect change and to affect healthy behaviors, to put ourselves on the right path towards prevention. But to meet this goal, we need to use the available data that we have to develop recommendations towards healthy living from infancy to adulthood that help us prevent the development of Crohn's disease. We need to communicate that knowledge to the public in forums like this and in using 21st century innovations like social media. And we need a major investment from government, from industry, and from the public to fund clinical and basic science research that is going to help us discover the origins of Crohn's disease and foster strategies to prevent the disease from occurring. Crohn's disease is a global disease. Healthcare systems that do not adapt to the exponential rise of Crohn's disease over the next decade are at risk of creating a system that is unstable, whereby patients with Crohn's disease will outnumber the resources, the infrastructure, and the personnel that's needed to care for them. The best way to avoid this is by investing in research that discovers how we can manipulate our environment to optimize our microbiome. By doing that, we can prevent the global rise of Crohn's disease. Thank you.